Okay, had to pause it. Just sitting here, today is Friday. Happy Friday or whatever day that I post this video because y'all know how I do. Anyway, um, I have not worked today. I'm at my computer, I'm clocked in. They did something with the VPN last night and when we logged in this morning, we were not able to remote in, but I'm pretty sure the people that are in the office today can log on because I think it's only the remote users. They gave us the new VPN to use, but now my programs won't work, like the dental software, and it won't work for everyone. So we're all just sitting here. Yeah, they should just call it. It's been three and a half hours and nothing has been done today but at least it's not just my computer. It's like everyone who's working from home. But apparently IT is trying to work on it and they cannot even remote into our computers to see what's going on. So it's a company-wide thing and they should just call it, but let us get paid for it because it's not our fault and I don't wanna use my vacation time for this. So just sitting here. Everything finally came back up around 10.30, right after my lunch, and then I was able to work. So I'm just on my last break right now. So as you can see, yes, I'm in the hospital. Um, remember the video that I put up that I said I was fighting for my life because my stomach started hurting so bad? Well, it happened again last night. No, not last night, because I stayed here last night, the night before. And it was horrible, you guys, horrible, um, to the point to where Cheyenne brought me in. And um, yeah, they ran more tests this time. They did a CAT scan and they took x-rays. They said that my small intestine was inflamed. They don't know why. So they kept me last night, kept me on pain meds. Today I'm fine, I feel no pain at all. The doctor should be in in a couple of hours and talk to me, let me know what's the next steps to take, but I do wanna go home. But there's something that needs to be done because why am I getting inflammation of my intestine, my small intestine? So yeah, here in the hospital and I know I look a mess, crazy mess, but it's okay, I'm in the hospital, so. Yeah, and I got the room to myself because they were so full, but I got the room to myself. And the first room that I was in, I'll have to tell you guys about that later. I got the room to myself because I'm on a CPAP machine and their CPAP machine here is super loud. So that's the reason why they were able to give me my own room, which I'm glad for that. But let me show you guys, let me turn it around. So standard room and all of my information and all that is up there. So I'm not gonna show that. But they took out the other bed. That's the CPAP machine right there that I use. Cheyenne just went home because she stayed overnight. Um, they couldn't find a more comfortable um, chair for her. I don't know why they didn't leave the bed in. I don't know, um, I guess because she's not a patient or whatever. But she went home to rest. I told her I'll just let her know what happens a little bit later. And Savannah's at home also. She was here last night as well. So yeah, you guys. and. and all this stuff. The nausea is gone because they gave me something in my IV, which let me show you guys See right there. I got the IV in. They're giving me fluids. Um, the only time I can drink water is when I'm taking my meds. And today is Sunday, by the way. This all started late Friday night, like 1 or 2 a.m. My stomach started hurting. And when it wouldn't settle down, Saturday morning, I asked Shy and I'm like, you gotta take me in because I felt it getting to the point where it was last time. It was worse last time. It wasn't as bad this time because I didn't wait and let the pain just, you know, linger. Y'all, I'm having a rough time. So I don't know if you could tell, but my arm is really swollen right there. And my veins are hard to find. I've always been that way. So this started swelling and bleeding. So she moved it here and this was very painful to get in. I do not like this feeling at all. But on a happy note, 
I will probably be discharged tomorrow. Y'all check out my dinner. We have chicken broth, jello. I don't even like jello. <laughs> Juice and right there is hot water for the tea, which I'm not gonna have, but yeah. Y'all, it's many days later. I wanted to pick up the camera, but I needed to rest and relax and just heal when I got home. So in this video, I will explain to you guys everything that happened and how it happened. I know I was trying to tell you guys in the hospital, but I'm finally out and about. I am leaving Winco right now. I just got in and I'm just letting the car cool down because it's so hot. It's 106 out here today. I plan on going get Cheyenne and Savannah some flowers because they were there the entire time. Tariq is out of town right now, so he kept calling and everything. I'm going to buy Cheyenne some flowers because she was there the entire time with me. She left twice to go home to shower and just to sleep in her own bed for like a couple hours during the day. But and Savannah was scheduled to work, but Cheyenne called in for me. So I really appreciate that. So I'm gonna go get her some flowers and she loves nothing but cake, the raspberry flavor. So I'm going to go get her one of those. Um, the little buntinis, I think that's what they're called. That and I'm gonna get Savannah some flowers too. So yeah, ooh y'all, it is so hot. It feels good to be outside and just doing things on my own. Yeah. All right, you guys, let's go to, I wanted to do all this before she got home, but I'm not gonna make it in time. I wanted to have it like in her room when she got home, but maybe I'll just try to sneak it in to my room. And then they're going out tonight actually with friends. So maybe I'll try to hide it in my room and then do it that way. Not the, not the butt cake because that's supposed to be cold, but I don't know, we'll see you guys, but I probably will not make it home before she does, and I don't want her to see it, so don't know how I'm gonna do that. We'll figure it out. I'm just rambling, I know. I'm just trying to cool down you guys. So if you didn't figure it out, I'm making roasted vegetables and I put everything that's here in it. Um, one pan, I didn't use the balsamic vinegar because Savannah doesn't like it, but I used this and then also pepper, but I put that away and then I put fresh rosemary. So this is one pan. This is the pan without the balsamic vinegar. And I know you're supposed to space it out more, but this is my first time making this, so we'll see. It smells so good, you guys. And as you guys seen, I cut up a pepper, purple onion, broccoli, zucchini, and squash. That's it. I didn't put any potatoes in it because it's starch. So I'm trying to do low carb right now. Um, not keto, just low carb. So yeah. So these are the flowers that I got Savannah, and she loved them. And these are the flowers that I got Cheyenne. She loved them as well. And I got her a card. And then I got her two of the white chocolate raspberry, nothing but cakes, nothing but cakes. So, yeah. Okay, so the girls have actually left, so it's just me. The first pan of vegetables are done, the one with the balsamic vinegar, and the second one is in now, so I figured now would be a good time for me to tell you guys um, the story time of everything that went on, and I'll try to make it short because there was a lot that happened, you guys. I went through a lot, I went through a lot. So. It was a Saturday morning. Um, me and the girls were up late. They were in my room. We were just talking. It was like one or two o'clock and I felt my stomach starting to hurt. And in my head, I'm like, it doesn't feel like it felt last time. So I was able to sleep all night. So I woke up maybe like around 6 a.m. And my stomach just started hurting really bad. And I already knew. And with this pain, you guys, I'm gonna spare you some of the details. Just 
you don't want to know but it comes with vomiting and diarrhea you get it so pain so bad in my upper stomach before it got to where it got last time I'm like I just need to go in so she took me in her car and I had a bag with me in case you know I threw up which I didn't throw up in her car thank goodness so got there checked in they ran so many tests and I told them because they were like okay you were here before for this last month you know did you eat the same thing and I'm like no I told them I said that day I hadn't had anything to eat I only had liquids So I told them what I had to drink and they knew they were like, okay, well, it's not food related. There's something else going on. So they ran every test you can think of. I had a CT scan. I had a chest x-ray. I had one of those barium swallows, I think it's called, where you drink this white chalky medicine or whatever. And as you're drinking it and swallowing it, they're getting images of you know your esophagus and how it goes down just to make sure everything's okay my blood work came back fine they checked my sugars that were fine they checked my blood pressure I mean it was a little bit elevated because you know of what was going on I was nervous and worried and in pain or whatever but that was normal so they got to the point to where nothing was helping the pain I mean they gave me nausea medication through the IV and that helped but the pain in my stomach it was just it was unbearable you guys so they decided because everything that I was telling them and all my symptoms they decided to let me stay overnight for observation and I ended up staying two nights there you guys so I was down in ER which let me tell you guys I've watched the show ER and Grey's Anatomy but to actually see things going on you hear them making announcements of trauma ETA five minutes or they're here now or something like that and then we seen so much we've seen at least three or four people come in and hand in handcuffs and then they make them put on these like green type scrubs that are meant for the inmates we seen a lady there that she didn't want no white people no white nurses at all touching her coming into the room she cussed out one of the nurses she attacked one of the nurses and I'm like oh my goodness never seen that then one little boy came in and it was actually like what you see on TV. Somebody was on top of him on the gurney giving him CPR and we overheard the nurses saying that he was in the water for five minutes in a swimming pool. And then I'm sitting there in my mind, even though I'm in pain, I'm like, Lord, please, Lord, touch him, save him, you know, let him be okay. Then we seen him going out they had all the wires on him he was stable but I guess they were taking him to another hospital that can help him better like UC Davis or something like that I was at Kaiser so then we heard trauma ETA five minutes so when it was just me and Cheyenne that was there at that time and at that time I'm sitting and I'm the reason why I'm there all day long is I'm waiting for them to, to give me a room to go upstairs I was in the ER right then Savannah texted me and said or she texted Cheyenne and said mom they won't let us in the hospital's on lockdown I started panicking I'm thinking oh my goodness what's going on out there what's going on in here whatever and the nurses told me don't worry it's because the person that they were bringing in that was there he had gotten shot in the head it was gang related and they found out that the people were still looking for him and there have been cases where they go back to the hospital to try to finish the job so they locked the whole hospital down so the nurse, he was so nice and kind. He actually went and got Savannah so she can feel safe and be in the hospital with us. So I appreciate him doing that for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. They had to do a COVID test for me when I was there before I went upstairs. I mean, I felt like I was poked and prodded and just, I felt like I was on display. But they had to figure out and try to figure out what was going on with me. And they couldn't. The CT scan, they said that everything looked fine but they seen that my small intestines were swollen, but they didn't want to do like exploratory surgery or have them stick a scope down my throat or something like that to try to see what's wrong because I wasn't having symptoms of somebody who would need that. And then they were saying that it's not diverticulitis or colitis because that's just something different. I don't have any signs of that. And I told them, I said, it's like, I'm violently ill, I'm throwing up diarrhea, and my stomach's hurting, and it's violently 
until something in my stomach, something in my body's trying to get out. And they don't know if it's something that's dormant in me or, and that something triggers it. They don't know, I don't know, and it's frustrating and it's scary. The first time it happened, I thought, you know, it was a one-off because it was something that I ate. I thought it was the fruit and I don't know. I just thought it was something that I ate. And now that it happened again, and I know that I didn't eat anything. My lips feel really dry, you guys, hold on. Okay, so if y'all were looking at me with dry lips, I apologize. Anyway, so what was I saying? So because I didn't eat anything, they know it's not food related, but they know it's something's going on. So we do have some plans in place in case it happened again. And what they wanted to do, this is TMI, but they wanted to get a stool sample, but I had nothing to give because I was on a clear liquid. And when I got there, that had already happened at home. You get what I'm saying? I don't need to go into detail. So I didn't have anything to give them to test to see what's going on. So we do have a plan in place in case it happens again, which I don't want it to happen again. I mean, I do want them to find out what's going on and fix it, but I don't want that to happen again. It was scary and it's not like I didn't feel that my life was threatened or anything like that, but it was just scary because it came on I'm fine one minute and then the next I'm not and then I'm violently ill and as I'm going through this I get shaky and I feel really clammy and I'm sweating and it's just it's the whole the whole ordeal was scary so that's where we are now you guys um, I do have a follow-up and I need to talk to the GI specialist so they said there's a few other tests that they can run they can have me swallow this tiny camera and so they can see what's going on I don't know if I'm comfortable with that yes I do want to know what's going on but I don't know if I'm comfortable with that and yeah but they did give me some medicine I'm looking here like it's here um, I took it I but it's to help with acid reflux even though I don't have that but they told me to take that once a day to see if that helps and we're gonna I'm gonna do that for six weeks so that's it you guys I wish I had something to tell you guys as far as this is what happened this is the reason why and they know and they're gonna fix it I don't know so I'm living life I'm thanking God that I mean, it could have been worse but I'm thanking God that I'm just thanking God that it, it could have been worse but it wasn't so even though it was scary so yeah that's basically it but I'm better now um, my stomach is still a little sore not sore like when you do sit-ups or something like that it's like an internal sore because you know it's my small intestines but yeah that's about it y'all pray for me keep me in your thoughts all right this is dinner so I just opened up the salmon to make sure it was cooked all the way through Anyway, this side is the one with the balsamic because it's darker and this side is not. And I know it's like a little bit too dark. Um, I put a little bit too much oil in both of the pans. So this is my first time making it. But in spite of that, it's so good, you guys. So good. You want to put the stone blocks in first and then you know, if you're going to add more. Hello, hello. So it is Saturday. Happy Saturday. And it's one o'clock. We got a late start to our day. Um, as you can see, and I was making my breakfast which was lunch and I had the lettuce wraps so now we are about to run the streets and see what we can get into we are going to see the blackening later on today so we already got our tickets but yeah you guys how do you like my little sunflower I always call it a covering but what do you call these things kimonos or whatever I don't know I don't know if this is would be considered a kimono but yeah um then I just have my snaga on. 
my little sandals. So yeah, I'm feeling cute today. I'm feeling thankful to not feel sick. And yeah, we were going to go to the beach. That was the plan, but we all got up late and the beach is about a two hour drive from us. Maybe an hour and a half, you know, depending on traffic. But by the time we get there, it's gonna be late. And then we have to turn around and drive back home. So we're saving it for another Saturday. Next Saturday we can't because we have plans already. I'm gonna help a friend out with our house. So yeah. So let's see what we get into today. I you know your boss movies. Perfect. All right. What I got from Hobby Lobby. Ignore my loud fan. It's getting really warm. I'm going to turn my air on shortly. I got this from Hobby Lobby because I wanted something to put my medication and my vitamins in because my dresser started looking like a pharmacy and even though there's only two things that I take that are um, would be considered like a medicine that I have to take every day. Um, the rest are vitamins and it's quite a lot it will it looks like a lot but I just wanted this little case to put them in here and that way I could just open it when I need it now it doesn't necessarily match my room but isn't this cute isn't this cute and plus I can paint it if I want to but I probably won't because I like this design and I even like the red color or the cherry wood yeah you guys if you have like a lot of vitamins or something on your dresser and you don't like the look just get a decorative container or something cute it doesn't have to be this one but you know it's something cute let me throw this in really quick I know I was telling a story about me being in the hospital but I realized I never told you guys about the first room that I was in which was insane so my first room that I was in I had a roommate and you know how in a hospital room there is an overhead light that turns on like the whole room and then there's also individual lights on each side right so if the nurses need to go in for patient B then they'll turn patient B's light on not patient A and let patient A sleep right okay so I was in bed A they put me in they turned on only my side of the light not the whole light out of respect to the lady who was sleeping in bed B right and the curtain was drawn so I never seen her so they turned on my light and then the nurse said okay one moment we'll be back to take your vitals and get you all you know settled in so then the older lady said turn off the light and I'm like did she say turn off the light and me and my girls are just sitting looking like okay and then she kept saying turn off the light turn off the light turn off the light she kept screaming and then i said ma'am the light is not on you however when the nurses come in and check me out then we will turn on off the lights she got quiet then she started screaming again turn off the lights turn off the lights and here come the nurses again and they go on to her side and said ma'am you have a roommate Oh, I have a roommate. Is it a female? Yes, it's a female. Okay. Is she going to turn off the light like it's my fault, right? And she said, well, th the light is on because we need to check her out. And it's not in your eyes. But as soon as we're done, we'll turn off the light. Okay. So I thought that calmed her down. So, I don't know, just a few seconds goes by and me and the girls are talking. And the nurse is taking my vitals again or whatever. And then she goes, turn off the light. I mean, she's screaming and you could tell by the nurse's reaction that she was a difficult patient because, you know, I just seen it in her demeanor. She kept sighing and rolling her eyes and, you know, stuff like that. And so then they said, we're going to have to um, change rooms for her because she's never going to let her sleep, meaning the patient in bed B is never going to let me sleep. So they must know something more than I know. So they had to wait until, is it the unit secretary or the charge nurse? They needed to get permission. So they're like, we're going to probably have to wait until we hear from, you know, the charge nurse. I think it was the charge nurse. Anyway, so the lady kept saying, 
turn off the light. She was crying at this point. And I'm like, okay, I feel bad for her. But at the same time, this entitled old lady, you, you're in a room with another person. And the light's not directly on you. So give me a break. Go to bed. Turn around. Put the blanket over your head so you won't see the light. I don't know. She continues to scream, turn off the light. And then she said, turn off the light. And then we could pack up tomorrow. We could leave. And she said, I'm going to get my gun. I mean, it's like she went through all different kind of voices. I'm going to get my gun. And when she said that, I'm like, okay, she's not all there. So it gave me a little bit more compassion. But at the same time, I'm like, get me out of the room because this lady is going to drive me nuts. I didn't say that, but I mean, she just kept going on. Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. And we can pack up and leave tomorrow. We can go. And I'm like. I can't do this but I didn't say anything and then the nurse is like you know what they didn't wait to hear from whoever they needed to hear for from to get permission to move me they just moved me and then I found out later that I was gonna get my own room anyway because of my CPAP machine so it was insane and then um, I guess it took a long time for her to go back to sleep or I don't know I don't know but the next day because I was down the hall and kind of like around the corner I heard her yelling again and she was screaming help and it was that same voice and I know it was her and then I kept hearing her help and then she would like just scream and I'm like oh my god at that point if I was still in that room with her I definitely would have said look um you need to either move her or move me because this ain't happening so yeah mm -hmm.